What's going on, friends? One of the quickest and easiest ways to get yourself into the 100 horsepower club is to go out and buy the Black Sheep of Harley Davidson, otherwise known as the B Rod. The V Twin Racing Street Custom, otherwise known as the VRSC V Rod, was Harley Davidson's first water cooled motorcycle that actually saw the light of day. Harley's first actual water-cooled motorcycle line was Project Nova, but that was actually scrapped and went the wayside in favor of the Evolution engine platform. So today we have the Pan America and the Sportster S. But before those bikes, all there was was the V-Rod. The V-Rod was really Harley-Davidson's test bed in the new millennium to see if customers were going to actually buy this thing or if they really just needed to stick to their V-twin air-cooled engines. Well, consequently, this water-cooled platform did not replace the old 45-degree V-twin, but it did develop its own cult following. And basically, it was that cult following that led the V-Rod to continue to be produced alongside the twin cam engine for the next 16 years, all the way up until 2017. And please don't forget, if you enjoy the video, please don't forget to drop a like on the video and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. So while pretty much all of Harley-Davidson's engineering staff was busy developing the twin cam engine back in the late 90s, Harley-Davidson actually tapped the Germans and Porsche to actually help design this motorcycle. Harley took a small group of Milwaukee engineers and basically had them work with Porsche to help develop this engine. Now, incidentally, this is not the first time that Harley-Davidson has actually worked with Porsche. Harley actually worked with Porsche back in the AMF years on Project Nova. Porsche was tapped by Harley-Davidson for the fact that Porsche had made a successful transition from air cooling to liquid cooling, and they basically didn't destroy their customer base while doing it. Now, surprisingly, the V-Rod wasn't actually an all-new platform. A lot of this engine was based off of Harley-Davidson's VR1000 Superbike. Now the VR1000 Superbike, this thing would have dominated Superbike racing in the late 1980s if it had, had been green-lighted by Harley-Davidson executives. But that's a whole nother topic for another video and how and why that failed. Now while the V-Rod's engine actually shares zero parts with the old VR1000 Superbike, you can still reasonably consider this engine as highly related to the VR1000. Now the V-Rod starts with a 60 degree V-twin angle. This angle is actually 15 degrees wider than the traditional 45. This wider V angle actually allows for more piston skirt clearance down by the crankshaft. And this is absolutely critical for a short stroke engine. Now the cylinders, being 60 degrees apart, they're also offset, which allowed them to use a one-piece crankshaft with a plain bearing bottom end, which is highly important for a high revving engine. And also the plain bearing would have been great on the 45 degree V-twin as well. Four valve dual overhead cams with an intermediate shaft at the base of the cylinder heads to drive the cam chains. This allows for a much more compact cylinder head design, which was absolutely crucial in getting the sizing of the bike right now the V-Rod uses a balance shaft that's actually located directly behind the crankshaft with a single counterweight and the rest of the vibration dampening is done through rubber mounting to the frame. The V-Rod's 5-speed transmission is actually sourced from a German supplier which incidentally is the same supplier which makes the transmissions for BMW motorcycles. Now the transmissions actually use helical cut gears on the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th gear. Now what this does is, is this is much quieter than a straight cut gear like they used on the first and the fifth gear within the transmission. So this was kind of a way to cheat but not cheat the noise requirement testing and be well below what they needed to be which allowed the engineers to give you a little bit louder exhaust on the stock platform. Now while this engine may have been a joint venture with the Germans at Porsche, the chassis of this motorcycle is all Harley-Davidson. So Willie G and his team spent years with a VR1000 engine fitting it into a soft tail, fitting it into a Dyna, and basically, in Willie G's words, learning what not to do. The VR's engine just didn't really look right in a soft tail or in a Dyna frame, because it, it literally, it just didn't have the visual mass and appeal 
that the air-cooled B-Twin had. So this is where they had to come up with a completely different styling look for this bike. So they decided on a drag racing inspired look because it just naturally fit the performance goals of this motorcycle. So they made the bike very long and low to minimize wheelies, very sadly, because that thing would have been a wheelie monster in a short chassis. But anyhow, they made it long and low and they raked out that front end to really get that drag race inspired look. So initially the styling department told the engineers to go kick rocks because there is no way this big long raked out front end is actually going to handle worth a damn. Well, as you know, Harley Davidson had plenty of experience with raking out front ends, especially on the old FLs. So the engineers go back, they get a Sportster, they rake it out 34 degrees, they take it over to styling and say, here, ride the damn thing. And then they found out, hey, it handled pretty dang good. So styling green lights that raked out front end. Now, if you've ever looked at a V-Rod and you've wondered why they went with that traditional twin shock in the rear instead of going with a mono shock, well, you can pretty much thank Buell for that little compromise on the V-Rod. So the V-Rod had to produce serious horsepower in its factory stock form. There was to be no compromises there. So to produce massive horsepower in stock form, they knew they had to have extra large mufflers and an extra large airbox. Now, the large mufflers weren't so much an issue. They felt like they could incorporate that into the styling of the bike. Now, getting a large airbox on this motorcycle, that was another challenge. And they learned back in the day with Buells, they weren't just going to hang this big old thing on the side of the motorcycle because, well, they learned people didn't really like the look of that too much. So, this basically left them with one logical place to put it, and that is where the gas tank would normally be on the bike. So yeah, on a V-Rod, that's not a gas tank. That's actually an airbox cover. So this would force Harley-Davidson to actually put the fuel tank underneath the seat. And in putting the fuel tank underneath the seat, there wasn't any room to actually mount a monoshock system underneath there. Which, incidentally, wasn't a bad thing because you put the fuel in the bike centered, low in the center, it basically gave the motorcycle a better center of gravity. Now with the V-Rod being water-cooled, obviously Harley-Davidson wasn't just going to hang a big black box of a radiator on the front of the motorcycle. Harley wanted to make the radiator an integral part of the motorcycle, so the bodywork that you see on the side of the radiator, that's not just for looks, that actually serves a function. So during wind tunnel testing, Harley incidentally figured out that behind the front tire, that was pretty much a dead space. There was no airflow in that area. So the bodywork actually serves two functions. One is to look good, add some styling to the bike, and also the sides of that bodywork, those are actually air scoops, which pull air in and over the radiator and also provide air to the oil cooler below the radiator. The V-Rod is truly a work of art, and even though it didn't catch on like Harley-Davidson would have liked, you really can't take anything away from these bikes if you really take a look at them and appreciate them for what they are. There really isn't another V-Twin out there that just has that throaty growl like a V-Rod. And to be honest with you guys, I know it doesn't sound anything like a traditional Harley, but when you hear the sound of a liquid-cooled dual overhead cam V-Rod and you hear that growl that engine makes, I immediately think Harley-Davidson. But guys, that's all I've got for you today. If you guys want to hear some more on the V-Rod platform, let me know in the comments. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to drop a like on the video and tell YouTube we've got an excellent community over here on the channel. Until next week, guys, please stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge the cars, and I'll catch you guys back here next week's video. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh.